Joining me in the studio today are the Conservative MP for Maystone, Helen Grant, and Labour's Karen Constantine, who's a councillor on Kent County Council and has just been re-elected to Thunnet District Council. Lovely to have you both with us this Sunday Thank morning. You. What message, Helen, do you take from the election results, the local election results here in the South East? Sure. Well, we always knew these elections were going to be difficult. We, we're mid-term, nine years into power, difficult cycle. Um, they were terrible, bad, bad result, and, and I think that happened because people are completely frustrated by the fact that we have not delivered on Brexit. And I, I think this was actually evidence locally, certainly on the doorstep around Maidstone and Tunbridge Wells, and, and actually in the spoiled ballot papers. Mm. So, for example, in, in Hawkehurst and Sandhurst, there were 60 failed or soiled ballots, and in, in I, I think it was Benenden and Cranbrook, 30, when usually there would be maybe two or three, mm. and many of those spoilings were Brexit-related. Karen, same question to you. What do you take from these local election results? It's not just about Brexit, it's actually about austerity. So that's what I was hearing on the doorstep. That's what I think was reflected in our gain at mm -hmm. Thanet District Council. Remember, we've gained 15, 15 seats on Thanet District Council. People's frustrations are with the state of the local council. They're with the lack of bin collections. They're with litter on the streets, all the usual things you would expect for a district council. So you would argue that people did vote on local issues? In, I think in they certain... very much did. And I also think it was an anti austerity vote. I think it was an anti-conservative vote. Well, which may be the case in Thanet, but, it, but, but that's difficult to extrapolate across the country, isn't it, where Labour didn't gain seats, they lost seats overall. We, we, we gained more, obviously, we, we lost 71 seats, mm. but overall we did really, really well. I mean, I don't think you can compare the loss of 71 seats to the catastrophic loss that the Tories experienced. I don't think it's just about Brexit. I also okay. think it's about austerity, and people now have, are fed up of that too. Mm. Well, certainly when I was talking on, on social media with people where I am and I was asking them, look, I'm going to do the Sunday politics at the weekend, was this all about Brexit? They said, no, in Tunbridge Wells we voted on the new theatre, we voted on the hub in Southborough. So there were areas where local issues did come to the fore. Let, let's go back to the doorstep. Helen Grant, what were people saying to you about Theresa May? There is much talk this morning about how long she lasts. Daniel Hannan in The Telegraph this morning, who's running as a candidate mm. for your party in the South East, said this, if MPs don't remove Mrs May immediately, that is this side of the European elections, there will be no Conservative Party to inherit. Is he right? Well, I, I think, just going back to the doorstep point, it was about local issues, and, and that's why we did you know, quite well in Maidstone. We, you, you know, we didn't lose, we didn't mm. win, we, we held. Um, but, but I think it's more that people are generally frustrated and fed up with Westminster politics, but, but if, West, ra yeah. rather than one per person. W w w so and, in which case I you're saying Daniel Hannan is wrong, Theresa May isn't the problem and she should remain... I, I'm saying that people are fed up with what we are doing. We were sent to Westminster mm. to make decisions, make tough decisions and deliver. Yeah. And unfortunately, we have not delivered Brexit. And, and that is an annoyance. And I think we all okay. actually have but, to take some responsibility for but, that. But you retweeted David Davis's support for former Brexit Secretary Dominic Raab to be part leader and PM why do you think he's the right person clearly you are thinking beyond Theresa May well I, I mean there's no vacancy at, at this minute but uh, certainly there is a lot of talent in the Conservative Party uh, Dominic Raab is one of those that could do extremely well but you know there are other people too uh, Karen Brexit you want another referendum on any deal interestingly John McDonnell said on the Ma program just before us we may well have to have a public vote on any Brexit deal which may be comfort to you isn't there a sense that resolving Brexit as quickly as possible you know a deal between the Conservatives and Labour in the next week perhaps would just enable you to move on you've talked about austerity you've talked about the local issues this would enable you to move on why do we want another referendum well I think it's unlikely that we're going to get a deal between the two parties I think going back to Theresa May I think the time has come for Theresa May to step down I think she has lost the confidence of not only her own party but very many people in the country and that's playing into this idea that politics is a mess we don't want our politics to be a mess we want okay. proper democracy in place let me just ask Helen a quick question on, on Brexit. A deal could be done between Labour and the government this week. There's lots of talk about it, even about what might be in it. It might save you from getting a kicking in the South East European Parliament elections, not least to the Brexit party, and we're speaking to its leader, Nigel Farage, in just a moment. Is that important? 
what to, to find a solution and leave the EU. To say, <laughs> and to say, well, yeah, but, but crucially, to stop you getting that kicking in the south, you don't want another kicking I, like I, you had last week. I, I think the priority, without any shadow of a doubt, is to deliver on that referendum result. That is the focus. That's what we are trying to do. Um, if these uh, discussions between um, uh, uh, Theresa May mm. and Jeremy Corbyn work, then then good. But we'll have to see. I don't think we should preempt. We, we'll just have to see what well, comes Brexit's out. Brexit's already been a disaster for people, hasn't we? We've seen job losses. We've seen the Bank of England report. We've seen the greatest rise in, in poverty that we've experienced for a very Can long I, time. Just pick up on that, Karen. We will come back to it. I, I promise yeah. we will come back. To a 2,700 mile footpath is being built around the entire coastline of England. It is a rambler's dream, but in the Isle of Sheppey, the plans are causing anger and frustration for local farmers. Well, joining us now is James Seymour, South East Area Manager for Natural England. That's the government agency responsible for this coastal path. James, we saw Susan Goodwin in Shelley's film there, raising concerns that Natural England's preferred route, and I know it's not decided yet, is just too close to the cliff edge at Sheppey. How do you respond to that and the, and the issue, obviously, of danger? Well, it's a great opportunity for the coastal access to improve things, actually. Currently, there's no option for people to move the path when it falls into the sea through natural coastal erosion. Whereas after the coastal path is established, there's opportunities for that to be well managed as a national trail, but also there's provision for it to roll back as natural processes take their toll. Gordon Henson MP says that in one instance, the path would run as close as six metres to the house of one family. There's got to be privacy concerns about that. Again, you know, there's particular areas which are excluded from us to consider such as gardens and those aspects so you know we, we have written into the way we operate as natural and we've come up with a recommendation and the first stage is to talk to all stakeholders so right at the beginning um, the Sheppey route we, were to, we opened up we had drop-in centre sent sessions with locals with parish councils and then we started talking specifically to the landowners and people interested in the route itself let's bring out in two other kent voices on this very subject helen grant we heard from your conservative colleague in shelley's report gordon henderson he opposes the plans and says that these people his constituents are up against the overbearing might of the all-powerful state how should the government respond well, personally, I mean, I, I love it, actually. I, I think it's, it's a great plan. It, it's, it's good to encourage walking. It's good for health. It's good for tourism. It's good for the local economies. Clearly, um, people need to be safe. And I was concerned about, you know, uh, routes going too near cliff edges. That needs to be dealt with. And, you know, we would not want landowners to suffer. Should they be compensated? Well, I think it's about common sense and compromise at the end of the day. That's what will get this through. And, and I know that there's a very restrictive uh, and, and, and uh, clear statutory consultation period. And if that consultation happens in the right way, mm. then hopefully the, there will be solutions found uh, which will negate having to pay damages for by way of compensation to landlords that aren't happy but it's compromise and common sense. Karen Constantine quick thought about this about whether the government's got a role here to step in and compensate how the rest of this should play out. I think it's a, a great idea I, I wasn't really uh, fully certain of the, the scale of the ambition but I think it's absolutely fabulous. I think the two key benefits, the benefits mm. to health, shouldn't be underestimated. Inactivity costs the NHS billions and billions of pounds, that's one thing. And the second thing is the real opportunity to build business around that coastal mm. path is a really key one for lots, for lots, of, lots of areas. So I, I really welcome it. I think the one thing that we do need to think about is access to public transport to mm. make sure people can get to these places walk as far as they want to walk, looking at all yeah. abilities, and actually then get, get back. Okay. So the more of this we can do, the better, I think. Okay. Karen, thank you very much indeed. James, thank you for joining us on that one. Now, the Brexit party isn't the only new party fighting the European parliamentary elections. The new pro-Remain party, Change UK, are also standing. In Westminster, they've got 11 MPs who defected to them from Labour and the Conservatives. We've almost no time left, about 45 seconds left in the programme. What do you two, as representatives of what people consider the main parties, Karen Constantine in one sentence, what do you think of the new parties that you've heard from this morning? I think it's ridiculous to say Labour Party is broken. I think it's ridiculous to say we're on the verge of separating. I think you need to, to take your anger and fire it very firmly at the Conservative Party. And a final thought to Helen Grant, what you've heard this morning. And I just parties. feel we should all be focusing on honouring the referendum, which was clear, decisive, the people have spoken, coming together and leaving the EU. It was anything but clear, the referendum. <laughs> we are never going to get these two to agree on that. Disagree. Warren, lovely to see you this morning. <laughs> Helen and Karen, thank you both very much indeed for coming in. That's all we've got time for this week. My thanks, of course, to all today's guests. We're back next Sunday, so until then, enjoy your weekend. Thanks for watching.